If you've ever wondered what machine learning is and where it's used, you're in the right place. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of this fascinating technology and its real-world applications. Machine learning is woven into the fabric of our daily lives, often operating behind the scenes without us even realizing it. Consider this. When you fire up your web browser and enter a search query, the search results you see are actually generated and ranked by sophisticated learning algorithms. Your photo application effortlessly recognizes your friends' faces and organizes your photo collection, all thanks to machine learning. Ever wonder how your email inbox manages to filter out spam so effectively? It's machine learning algorithms at work. When you're feeling a bit tired and decide to unwind with some Netflix, those movie and show recommendations tailored just for you. Yep, that's machine learning at play. And right at this very moment, as you stumbled upon this video, machine learning is at the heart of the content recommendations you're receiving. In essence, machine learning is the driving force behind all these scenarios, quietly improving our experiences and making our digital world smarter and more personalized. It's all around us. But what exactly is machine learning? At its core, machine learning grew out the field of artificial intelligence. They realized that the only way a machine could perform more difficult tasks, like for example autonomous driving, was to let the machine learn by itself. So, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that enables computers to learn and make predictions or decisions without being explicitly programmed. It's all about algorithms and data, and it's changing the way we interact with technology. Let's break down the basics. Machine learning involves three key components, data, algorithms, and models. Data is the foundation. The more quality data you have, the better your machine learning model can learn. Algorithms are the rules and statistical methods that guide the learning process. And models are the results. They are the computer's way of making predictions or decisions based on what it's learned. There are various types of machine learning, including supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. In this introduction video, we will focus on the first two. Supervised learning involves labeled data, meaning, we give the algorithm a dataset with the right answers. For example, we give it a dataset like this, where x is a variable, also called a feature in machine learning, and y is the correct answer. Given this dataset, the algorithm learns to make predictions and compares them to the actual outcomes. After training, it created a model to estimate what the outcome, y, is given some input, x. In supervised learning there are two possible problems you might come across. Regression problems and classification problems. The former is a problem where y takes on a real number. For example, we want to estimate the price of a car based on the amount of horsepower it has. We can give the algorithm a dataset like this. Next, the algorithm can be trained and might conclude to use a straight line as model for this problem. However, in this case our learning algorithm might use a second-order polynomial as it fits the data better. On the other hand, we also have classification problems. These are problems where the output is either 1 or 0. For example, you can make an algorithm that estimates if person of a certain age with a mole of a certain size is likely to have a malignant tumor. Let's say you provide a dataset like this, where malignant can be either 1 or 0. In a 2D representation, this might look like this. It is important to note that we only used two features in this example. In more complex, real-world applications, the amount of features can become really large and it can't be plotted anymore in a 2D figure. However, the mathematics behind it doesn't become that much harder than with only two features. For example, we can add a feature to our problem. If we add the thickness of the mole, the problem can be represented in a 3D figure. If we then add another feature, it will become 4D, which is not representable in a figure. That said, let's look again at the figure. For classification problems we want to distinguish a boundary, which is called the decision boundary. If we look at our data points, the learning algorithm can for example decide to use a straight line as decision boundary. This would mean that after training, if we test a new data point that lays on the left of this decision boundary, the model would predict that the probability of the mole being benign is higher than being malignant. One last thing to notice is that classification can also be done with more than two classes. 
then we call it multi-class classification. And as the name suggests, it will give the possibility to add multiple classes. For example, 0 means no diabetes, 1 means type 1 diabetes, 2 means type 2 diabetes. In some cases we even want to use an infinite amount of features. This is something we will see in a later video about support vector machines. Before we dive deeper into the fascinating world of machine learning, if you're finding this video informative and want to stay updated with our latest content on programming and technology, please consider subscribing to our channel. Now that we have seen supervised learning, let's take a look at what unsupervised learning means. Unsupervised learning deals with unlabeled data, meaning that we give the algorithm a dataset without the right answer. It is used for helping to discover patterns and relationships within the data. Now, the learning algorithm only receives the data and based on this data, it needs to find some structure in the dataset. This is done with what we call clustering. Clustering is a common task in unsupervised learning where the goal is to group similar data points together into clusters or classes. For example, let's look at this figure where the data has no longer any labels. In this case, the learning algorithm might decide to cluster these two groups. Next we want to see if a certain dataset called X belongs to any of these clusters. It's amazing how this technology can change our lives for the better. From healthcare to finance and beyond, the applications of this technology are limitless. In this introductory video, we explore the basics of and the two main types of machine learning. I hope you learned something new and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to share them in the comments below.